Hey, it's Debbie Potts, the host of the Low Carb Athlete Podcast, where I focus on helping you gain insight how to be fit and healthy from the inside out. So really, I'd love to call the podcast the Fit and Healthy Aging Athlete, but that's not a catchy name. So I haven't changed the name, but on the YouTube channel, you can find us on the Fit and Healthy Athlete or to be fit and healthy from the inside out. Anyways, I'm Coach Debbie Potts, and I go down many rabbit holes, and as I get older, I find myself being more curious on the why behind everything, and today in my Wild Health Precision Medicine course, we did a case study and got into talking about histamine, and it led me down researching Histamine. What are high histamine foods? How do you know if you're reactive to histamine? What are the signs and symptoms of histamine intolerance? What are the genetic SNPs? And so I got to look up some articles I wanted to share with you because if you're like me, you want to know what you can do to improve the aging process. So Dr. Amy Myers always has great blog posts and she has a new podcast. I was trying to get her on the show, but she's too busy with her own podcast. So I want to share her histamine intolerance article called histamine intolerance. All you need to know. And then we can touch on Dr. Jocker's website has a great article on suffering histamine tolerance intolerance. And then I looked up Dr. Ben Lynch, because if you read his book years ago on dirty genes, DAO enzyme was one of the dirty genes he talks about. And what was fascinating as I just talked to two leading doctors in leaky gut, gut or gluten intolerance and SIBO, Dr. William Davis and Dr. Tom O'Brien talking about gut health and small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And when I was looking up this article, to find it, or not article, but looking at research from Dr. Ben Lynch, what information he had to share on the DAO enzyme. He has an, uh, well, actually it's a few years old. I realized 2017 was a few years ago, but SIBO is absolutely connected to histamine and the DAO enzyme. SIBO increases histamine and overwhelms the DAO enzyme. The histamine from the gut absorbs into the blood, increasing histamine there. Now, methylation is needed to reduce histamine. So we're going to go into that a little bit if you're curious, because I'll go back to Dr. Jockers has great information on the signs and symptoms of histamine intolerance. I have a runny nose all the time lately. It's driving me nuts. I'm just not doing anything and my nose is dripping and it's gross and annoying, but you also root cause medicine, we look at why is it happening? I'm not just going to take a nasal spray. Isn't just the only thing. It's just not working, blowing my nose, wiping my nose. Yeah. It's just a bandaid, but why am I having runny nose issues? Kind of why I looked up histamine intolerance. If maybe that's it, but runny noses seems uh, to be a symptom of so many things. So ideally we test and not a guess, but what do we test to figure out if we have histamine intolerance? bunch of different things. So histamine intolerance symptoms, you can see on the video here on the YouTube channel, irritability, chest tightness, headaches, PMS, asthma, wheezing, heartburn, food allergies, diarrhea, vomiting, loose stool, seasonal allergies, nausea, runny nose, irregular heartbeat, low blood pressure, and motion sickness. So that can be related to a lot of other things. So we don't say, hey, it's all histamine related, but just to know what is histamine, So let's zoom in and then zoom out. Histamine is an important neurotransmitter, an immune messenger molecule. It's evolved in the process is involved in hydrochloric acid secretion for digestion, water reserves, key areas of the body, inflammatory response. So really focusing on lately the inflammatory response, because I feel and see that a lot of us athletes have chronic inflammation, especially I can reveal that information to clients when we do the functional lab testing, multiple labs, looking at the whole picture, looking at the whole person, but histamine receptors are located all over the body have many important functions. So why don't we also look at these receptors? 
So we can see there's histamine receptors on the smooth muscle, epithelial cells affecting skin, blood vessels. We have histamine H2 receptors in the intestine that control acid secretion, abdominal pain, nausea, heart rate. Then we have histamine H3 receptors, central nervous system, controlling nerves, sleep, appetite, and behavior. Then lastly, histamine H4 receptors in the thymus gland, small intestine, spleen, colon, bone marrow, white blood cells, and inflammatory response. So one of the major effects, this article says, histamine is causing the blood vessels to swell and dilate. When the body senses that it is threatened, it will secrete a higher amount of histamine. Why? Because this allows the white blood cells to quickly move through the bloodstream and find the potential threat and or infection. This is an important component of a healthy immune system. This should happen as with everything, acute versus chronic. If we have something acute once in a while, that's what the body's innate intelligence is supposed to do, put out those fires. But when it becomes chronic, that's what we keep looking at, this chronic inflammation. So let's go into histamine metabolism. Is always a little interesting chemistry, biochemistry. Histodine, iodine, converts to histamine. But where does that conversion happen? What blocks that conversion? What are the cofactors? And what's the result of too much or too little? Or as Dirty Jean's book talks about Dr. Ben Lynch with it's too slow or too fast. So conversion happens in the stomach, stimulates production of hydrochloric acid, which a lot of us have low HCL. Now we've got in the brain, neurotransmitters regulate sleep, hormonal secretion, memory function, and scroll down here, brain arousal. In the immune system, acts as a vasodilator in allergies, immune system response. So remember, nothing's bad or good. It's just a Goldilocks effect, what is the right amount? When does too much histamine become a problem or lack of? Histamine only becomes a problem when we have metabolic disturbances that do not allow us to effectively metabolize histamine properly. When histamine is formed and broken down by specific enzymes, We'll talk about those. And the centralness in the central nervous system, it's metabolized by histamine methyl transferase, HMT, while in the digestive tract is broken down into this enzyme we hear about, DAO, diamine oxidase. So in the digestive tract, it's, histamine is broken down, is supposed to be broken down by the DAO enzyme. Experts state that DAO is a major enzyme involved in histamine metabolism. The enzyme converts histamine into imidazole, dazzle, acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde, I'm saying that wrong as always, which does not trigger any sort of reaction in the body. Okay. The enzyme converts histamine. Now, DAO is responsible for ensuring. Steady histamine levels required for the balance of numerous chemical reactions that, that take place in the body. So we get balance amount of everything. And balance is balance, function, dysfunction. We have to look for the right amount of everything. So we can see histamine can be broken down into diamine oxidase, DAO, or by histamine HNMT, much easier to say. So histamine breaks down. Now, what alters this DAO production enzyme? So we can go to Dr. Ben Lynch and learn more about that. Look, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. When you put the missing pieces of the puzzle together for someone, it's fascinating what the body does and how it works. It just always is amazing me every day when I go down these rabbit holes. So we've got this alteration in DAO enzyme. So why? Why is what I always ask. How does that happen? Why does that happen? Small intestinal bacteria overgrowth is one of the reasons. How many people did Dr. William Davis say have on average SIBO? Some gut microbes in the small intestine produce a lot of 
high amounts of histamine as a byproduct of their metabolism. So small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. We'll get into that more with Dr. Ben Lynch's article. Copper, vitamin C, and B6 deficiency are important parts. So we always want to look at what are cofactors. Copper and vitamin C are crucial components of DAO enzyme. And B6 is a key factor or key cofactor that enables DAO to degrade histamine. So a lot of the tests we do, this is why I think it's great to do, if you have the money, to do nutri, uh, nutrient test and find out where are we deficient in. But see how everything works together. Copper and vitamin C, they're lower in a lot of people. B6 is often low. It's also involved in magnesium. So there's supplements we use often that people need B6 to help magnesium absorption. Leaky gut. Okay, so if you have SIBO, often people have leaky gut and then they also have endotoxicity, which is another rabbit hole we're going down next week. Intestinal permeability, leaky gut creates a major inflammatory stress in the body, which can contribute to poor DAO function. And then we're talking about this was looking up in our wild health precision medicine because it's epigenetics and blood work together into the clarity reports that we're going to go over mine in another few weeks. So on your SNPs, you can see even on 23andMe, homo type, homo, the DAO, sometimes people are more susceptible to developing a histamine intolerance. So if you have the genetic polymorphism in DAO enzyme, you can find that out on your genetic report if you did one. Now, also we can see certain medications. Ibuprofen, aspirin, antidepressants, immune modulators, antihistamines, Zetrek, Zytrek, Benadryl, histamine H2 blockers. According to Amy Myers, who's in the next article, histamine blockers are a class of acid reducing drugs. Seem like they would help prevent histamine intolerance, but these medications actually deplete DAO enzymes in your body. Chris Kresser says that histamine is different than typical food sensitivities and allergens that it's a cumulative problem. So we have to look at the symptoms if we have too many histamine molecules or do we have reduction in the DAO enzyme to the point where histamines overload the system? These symptoms will last until the body metabolizes the histamines and removes them from the system. So good diagram, too much, too little. The Goldilocks effect again comes in play. Too little histamine absorbs in the food. We have potential histamine related problems. Eating too much, food containing histamine? Do we have too little DAO enzyme? Do we have blockers? Adjusting substances that block DAO. So I won't go on and bore you, but just look at the article here. I'll put the link for Dr. Jockers. If you feel like you might be, as I have runny nose, causes of histamine intolerance. So my history, adrenal fatigue, which started my path into being more focused on functional medicine, root cause medicine. That happened to me, obviously in 2013, but red flags probably were there years beforehand. Environmental causes, right now it's springtime, pollen, dust mites. There's that in the air. I know, I can see it on the ground. Lack of sleep. If you don't prioritize your sleep, you better be doing that. A diet high in histamine from fermented, overripe, and aged foods can be an issue for some people. Excessive alcohol intake, hormonal, excess estrogen, nutrient deficiencies, stress, and anxiety they all tie together. Stress out, anxiety, lack of sleep. So great chart. Now, if we go to Dr. Amy Myers' blog, amymyersmd.com on histamine intolerance, she has this long article. You can look up all this stuff here. What is histamine intolerance? 
So going into what is histamine, as I said from Dr. Jockers, let's review. Histamine is a chemical involved in your immune system, digestion, and central nervous system. As a neurotransmitter, it communicates important messages from your body to your brain. It's also a trigger for the production of stomach acid, which helps you break down and digest food effectively. So it's a trigger for production. So it's not bad. It's like insulin. Nothing's good or bad. It's the right amount. Okay. Histamine's main job is to signal immediate inflammatory response within the body. It raises a red flag, moves your immune system into action against potential attackers. Antihistamines work to prevent this response. So how does histamine affect your body? Histamine causes your blood vessels to swell so your white blood cells quickly move to resolve any problems. It's all part of our natural immune system, right? We have that built-in immune system. It's again, when anything's overactive, you're calling the EMS 911 every day, every hour. Typical enzymes will typically enzymes will break down histamine so it doesn't build up in your bloodstream. So what if that doesn't happen? Well, if histamine isn't broken down properly or regularly, what's going to happen? It's going to build up. You may eventually have histamine intolerance. So this goes with a lot of things in our body. If it's not broken down properly or regularly, it builds up and develop eventually into some type of imbalance, dysfunction, or here, intolerance. Histamine travels throughout your bloodstream. It can affect your gut, lungs, skin, brain, and even your entire cardiovascular system and a wide range of symptoms, often making it hard to pinpoint this issue is why I want to bring this up because we were looking at this in our case study today. Now, histamine symptoms, long list, but as I said, with my runny nose, it's also related to many other things. So how do we know? So histamine intolerance is not an allergic reaction. It becomes an issue when histamine breakdown is impaired. So remember, we just, just said back here, if histamine isn't broken down properly or regularly, it builds up and may develop histamine intolerance. So it's not an allergic reaction. It's a buildup. Histamine intolerance is difficult, right? So what are the symptoms? Abdominal cramps, abnormal menstrual cycle, accelerated heart rate, sleep, fatigue, flushing, migraines, headaches, which is a big thing. I always look at this for clients that often come to me with migraines. Hypertension, mood disorders, nasal congestion. This is me. Uh, sneezing, difficult breathing, people often have, tissue swelling, vertigo, dizziness. So that's a good example. I know someone that always had this crazy reaction to everything this springtime. And she was always having to take all these antihistamines and then had more problems. But that's what root cause medicine is more to me. As I get older, I'm questioning everything, the why. So if you take an antihistamine, it's another band-aid, not solving why am I having problems, as we said, clearing histamine. Why don't we look at what is upstream, what's not working? Am I missing those enzymes? So mood disorders, sleep, vertigo, list goes on. Now what I want to go into, how does the body break down histamine? Histamine intolerance results from an imbalance between histamine produced and your body's ability to break it down and clear it out. Kind of like your liver detox pathways. Your cells release histamine in the response to a trigger. Once formed, histamine is either stored or broken down by enzyme. How is it stored? How is it broken down? That's what we need. What is needed to break down histamine? In the central nervous system, histamine is mainly broken down by histamine and methyltransferase, HMT. In the digestive tract, where often we see this issue, DAO enzyme we talked about. These enzymes 
naturally break down histamine and clear it out. So then we'll go back to leaky gut and SIBO. So a variety of reasons your body may not produce one or more of these enzymes. HMT is produced inside the cells and is usually more genetically influenced. DAO is produced in the intestine and responsible for breaking down the ingested histamine. If there's been intestinal damage, right here, red flag. If there has been intestinal damage, DAO production might be reduced. Okay, put the pieces of the puzzle together. What else can cause low DAO? Why is there a change in the intestines as SIBO, bacteria, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, parasite pathogen, what's going on? So here's a list, gluten intolerance. Boom, how many people have that? Leaky gut, SIBO, DAO blocking foods is alcohol, energy drinks, and even tea. Genetic mutations, inflammation from Crohn's, colitis, inflammatory bowel disease. And then all these medications that inactivate DAO, which is, again, ironic because if you take an antihistamine as Benadryl Zyrtec or histamine 2 blocker as Pepside and Zantac, these medications are inactivating DAO, but remember up here, DAO is responsible for breaking down ingested histamine. So if I have a histamine, all these symptoms, I'm taking, maybe you're taking this stuff for allergies, but you're kind of in this hamster wheel. It's not helping. Maybe it gives you temporary relief, but is it solving the problem or causing more problems? What causes high histamine levels? We naturally produce histamine along with DAO. Again, when the outside factors interfere in how HMNT and DAO work, the presence in your gut can decrease. So low levels of these enzymes mean histamine can be produced without regulation. Outside factors contributing to this overproduction include allergies, which we see on tests with the IgG E antibodies, SIBO, which we've been talking with Dr. William Davis about his book, Super Gut, gut bleeding, damage, leaky gut, mast cell activation, histamine rich foods. So if you have all these reactions, histamine reactions, as we go back to the symptoms, what if you work on your gut health? What if you get these cofactors to help with your DAO enzymes? What if you have a mast cell activation? It can be a primary cause of histamine intolerance, but not the main cause for a lot of people. Mast cells can be found in digestive tract, urinary tract, reproductive organs, respiratory, skin. These cells store inflammatory mediators. So go on and read more. If you feel like this is you, you might relate. Foods to avoid if you, if you have histamine intolerance. There's many foods that contain histamine, triggering a release of histamine or block the enzyme. We're talking about DAOs in the intestines. Recommend following, avoiding these foods till you address the underlying cause. So it's not forever. These aren't bad foods. If you have histamine intolerant signs and symptoms, then we may remove these foods until we address your gut health, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, leaky gut. So removing those foods are the 4R protocol or 4 5 s Five are histamine-rich foods, aged cheeses, even goat cheese, cured meats as bacon, salami, pepperoni, luncheon meats, hot dogs, dried fruits that I definitely stay away from, fermented alcoholic beverages as wine, champagne, and beer. Fermented foods that we're talking about that are good for gut health cannot be good for some people. 
fermented foods with sauerkraut, vinegar, soy sauce, kefir, yogurt, kombucha. We were just talking about those for your gut. They may not work for you. So that's why we really need to individualize our nutrition fueling programs and our healing and repair protocols. Citrus fruit, nuts as walnuts and cashews. Peanuts are not a nut, they're legume. They're on here. Soured foods, a sour cream. So a lot. Smoke fish. So really identifying, paying attention as a food and mood log that I do with clients. Any of these foods that are commonly eaten in our food plan, what if those foods are causing more reaction? I know I have a lot of these foods all the time. Pickles, avocados, tomatoes I haven't felt like lately. I know I have bacon. I've been doing my fermented yogurt. So you got to look at, okay, is the food I'm eating that's healthy for me not so healthy right now? Maybe I should look into that. Now, these other foods are not histamine rich, but they can trigger your cells to release histamine, causing symptoms. And histamine releasing foods are also listed here. Alcohol, artificial preservatives, bananas, chocolate, food containing dairy as cow's milk, nuts, papaya, pineapple, shellfish, strawberries, tomatoes, wheat germ. So it's kind of confusing. What can I eat? What should I eat? Well, it depends if you have some signs and symptoms of histamine intolerance. Histamine-rich foods, histamine-releasing foods, and then there's foods that block the DAO enzyme, which is funny. Here I am drinking green tea every day, but that could block my enzyme and cause my nose to be running all the time. So, geez, how, how do you do things right? <laughs> it's like ridiculous. So you have to just trial and error, course correct. Low histamine foods, what? Can you eat if you're having histamine issues? Cooked eggs, olive oil, coconut oil, coconut milk, fresh fruits as mango. I have a lot of sugar though for me. I can't do a lot of sugar, but all these foods, fresh vegetables, except tomato, spinach, eggplant, freshly caught fish, meat, poultry, herbal teas. So I always look at when I'm working with clients, what can you eat? Let's not focus on the long list when you're doing a gut healing protocol of what can't you eat, but what can you eat? So following a low histamine diet is one of the best things you can do to manage your histamine intolerance. Avoiding grains, legumes, and nuts can be helpful. And then reintroduce them slowly while you are having that low histamine diet and heal your gut. And then you slowly, when you're removing these foods, 30 days, then reintroduce them one at a time. And there's directions how to do that. So how do you know if you have histamine intolerance? Histamine blood test, DAO enzyme, measuring lipopolysaccharide or other blog I want to go into. Correlation of histamine one receptors and LPS production, a link between the immune system and histamine signaling. I see LPS measurements on our wheat zoomer test I do with some clients. The higher the level liposaccharides, the higher indication of inflammatory response. Measuring lipopolysaccharide, LPS levels can indicate possible inflammation connection to histamine intolerance. So starting histamine intolerance, food journal, all of that. Ease through your symptoms, diet, supplements. So looking at gut restore with betaine HCL supplements that promotes optimal stomach digestion, increasing acid levels so you can break food down. I think a lot of people can just start with that. Addressing the root cause of inflammation in your body, if it's related to maybe histamine relationships to the histamine intolerance, a low histamine diet, avoiding foods that block DAO. Hista enzyme for immediate relief is another solution on Dr. Amy's site, Amy's site. So check this out, tons of information on her blog. All right, let's wrap it up. So much information on this one. Dr. Ben Lynch, SIBO and histamine. What does it mean? Bacteria in your small intestine can contribute to full body histamine intolerance. 
So your small intestine is not supposed to have that much bacteria. It has defense built in to prevent this from happening. Bacteria overgrowth in the small intestine may produce histamine. Bacteria themselves can produce histamine. The DAO enzyme, which resides in your small and large intestine, works hard to reduce histamine, histamine from food, drink, and bacteria. The DAO enzyme gets overwhelmed from all the histamine and cannot get rid of it. So remember, too much at once, everything gets, can't keep up with, like you're doing your laundry. I've got laundry on the floor. I The washer's full. I've got three loads to do. It's just sitting there, so it gets piled up. The DAO enzyme gets overwhelmed from all the histamine and can't get rid of it fast enough. So there's a waiting line. The excess histamine contributes to gut dysfunction, including what we talked about, leaky gut, inflammation, food intolerances, and altered bowel movements. The histamine in your digestive system gets absorbed into your blood and circulates throughout the entire body, including your brain, your skin, your heart, lungs, and liver. Two more things, the higher histamine in these organs and the tissues leads to symptoms of headaches, irritability related to the brain, red face, hot, sweaty, eczema, psoriasis, and red lines of scratch. That's one of the tests Dr. Ben Lynch talks about to scratch your arms if you're high histamine. Increase in heart rate, difficulty breathing, asthma, increased utilization, methylation, and nutrients which support methylation in your liver. Even if the DAO enzyme works hard to break down the histamine, works hard to start breaking down the histamine, if there are additional blockages in other enzymes, harmful levels of aldehydes will increase. Very toxic and lead to vast number of symptoms. So vitamin B1 known as thiamine, big player to reduce this. So go back to what he was saying. Your small intestine does have some bacteria in it, and it should. Most bacteria should be in your colon. The density of bacteria increases from 100, the proximal small intestine, to 100,000, 1 million, well, a lot of zeros in there. How many is that? In the colon. Bacteria overgrowth is kept at bay by natural small intestinal defenses. Epithelia, the small intestine is continuously in contact, contact with food antigens. The enteric commensal bacteria and potential pathogens that enter the host through the diet. The bacteria load in the small intestine is low and it increases distally. To keep the bacteria count low in the small intestine employs its motility to sweep bacteria along. Mucus and antibacterial molecules secreted in the gastric acid, biliary juice, as well as substances produced by the commensal microflora and epithelial cells as panic cells. So in summary, he says, the small intestine has built-in defenses to keep bacteria overgrowth at bay. So if you have SIBO, signs and symptoms of SIBO, listen to Dr. William Davis, read his book, Super Gut. Hear what Restore your small intestinal defenses by getting the holistic method elements, basically, right? Here we go. Deep, restful sleep, stress reduction, being calm while eating. You need to be in that parasympathetic nervous system. Getting rid of anti-acids. You want to have an acidic stomach to digest that food, higher hydrochloric acid. If you are not acidic enough, when you take antiacids, your food's just sitting there. It's not breaking it down. Chewing your food 20, 30 times is super challenging, but at least eat slowly, mindfully, chew your food. Going to the bathroom when you feel the urge versus suppressing it because it's inconvenient. So that's how you can restore your small intestine defense system. Eating when eating <laughs> like that, right? I talk to this about this with my clients all the time. When you are eating, focus on eating, not multitasking. You're not on your phone. You're not watching TV. You're not in your car driving. You're not working at your desk while eating. Be focused, be relaxed, focus on chewing your food. Your brain's focusing on one thing, eating your food, not what's on TV. You're tasting your food, chewing your food, enjoying it. 
All right. Supporting your bile production with taurine and phosphatidyl choline. Want that good bile flow. So read more. I'll put this link because I'm not going to read all this, but strategy report I've done years ago. And we talked to Dr. Ben Lynch on the podcast a couple of times. You can see the DAO SNPs and how they work on histidine to histamine, how you need these certain SNPs, cofactors. So you can read strategy is very complicated, but you can get this long report and how to read it. So more information on this SIBO histamine connection, but histamine intolerance commonly associated with infections. Find them and eliminate them. So again, we don't want to have a band-aid treatment. Oil of oregano, caprylic acid, allicin, which is garlic from garlic, are effective at eliminating many forms of bacteria, viruses, gut infections. SIBO associated with histamine, many reasons. Fighting with antibiotics are not the solution. Support stomach acid and production with betaine HCL. You can find it on my full script. Being calm and chewing your food. Support that bile production we just talked about. Bile flow. While bile flow is being worked on, you may consider using ox bile. If you have gallbladder issues, get bile flow. We can tell with some lab assessment in your poop test. Use away from food before bed, best impact. So read over this. If you don't want to order all these supplements and people piecemeal things together, not test and guess. But lots of information, liver, gallbladder, probiotics, help balance the histamine, support elimination, B1 thiamine. So lots of information. So good blog post if you are curious about histamine. That's from Dr. Ben Lynch. Dr. Amy Myers had some great information about histamine intolerance. And then, of course, Dr. Jockers, how is wins the best infographics showing histamine intolerances. And I think there was more in your diagnosing, histamine bucket, common symptoms, histamine intolerance. Just, these blogs go on and on and on. But he, drjockers.com, has the best pictures if you want to read more. So that's a good summary. So hopefully that gives you a little information if you need to dive into more on your possible gut issues, SIBO, histamine intolerance, leaky gut. So I will talk to you next time.